Hi, my name is Rich, and today I want to talk about the Artillerist subclass for the Artificer in the 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. You can find this subclass in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and some of the Eberron books as well. And today I want to go through some of the feats, some of the races you could choose, and go through the abilities and see how it works and maybe get some tactics and skills made up there. And afterwards, maybe we can go through the spells, but I might save that for the next video. But uh, yeah, let's get started. So, we'll start off with the background. In Tasha's Cauldron, the description for the artillerist is uh, someone that specializes in using magic to hurl energy, projectiles and explosions onto the battlefield. This destructive power is valued by armies in the wars of many different worlds. And when war passes, some members of the specialization seek to build a more peaceful world by using their powers to fight the resurgence of strife. The world-hopping gnome Artificer V has been especially vocal about making things right. It's about time we fix the It's about time we fix these things instead of blowing them all to hell. Now I think generally speaking, the artillerist is a great ranged class. It's best ability is just to stay behind with the wizard and cast spells from afar and help support the group with uh, magical items, the artificer infusions. It's, uh, it can really start rack r uh, <laughs> it can really start racking up the damage when it uh, starts casting and using its eldritch cannons as well, which can be both uh, shoulder mounted or uh, handgun based or they can be big enough to be their own mobile turrets. But it all depends what sort of flavor you want to go with the Artificer. So let's move on to the races. Uh, from the player's handbook, I would say the two best races were the Tiefling and the Gnome. The Gnome is a natural fit for the Artificer because it has uh, lots of uh, subclasses, sorry, themes of uh, tinkering and creating mechanical uh, items. And the Tiefling gets a natural boost to intelligence, so it's not as good as the gnome, which gets plus two, the tiefling gets plus one, but it's still a welcome addition. And resistance to fire and a couple of extra spells is never going to harm anybody. So outside of the player's handbook, I decided to go to the Volo's Guide of Monsters, Volo's Guide to Monsters, and go with the Hobgoblin, because it naturally has intelligence and constitution, which are the two main abilities you're going to be focusing on with the Artificer. Uh, it also has good hand-to-hand -hand combat abilities and if you want to be able to take some damage or deal a lot more damage then it's a good pick. Lastly, I thought I would go with the Vidalkin. It's a really good choice because it gets natural boost to intelligence and it's a very logical sort of uh, scientific character and theme. So I'm sure you can uh, do your own research and you go into Oh, what was this? I believe it was uh, Ravnica, Guild's Guide to Ravnica, this is from, but uh, it's definitely worth checking out. So let's move on to the feats. For the Artificer, uh, Alchemist, not Alchemist, for the Artificer Artillerist, I chose the Wizard Initiate and the Artificer Initiate. Spell Initiates are always helpful with spellcasting classes. And when you have classes like the Warlock and Artificer that have a low level of uh, spell slots, it's always handy to get an extra first level spell. And I've never met a caster that's going to refuse an, ex an extra couple of cantrips. The next one is from uh, the Mythic Odyssey of Theros. It's tiefling only, but Flames of Philegios, it gives an intelligence boost and it gives you resistance, uh, sorry, extra damage with fire attacks. You're going to be using uh, Scorching Ray and Fireball with this character if you want to get the maximum damage. So this is always a welcome boost. Now the next choice is Keen Mind. And this can be a very divisive feat because some DMs really hate it because it's a way to really nitpick and oh, what time is it? And uh, players keep asking what direction they're at. So if you're going to pick this, talk with your DM first and try and decide if they're on the same wavelength. There's nothing worse than picking a feat and then never getting to use it. But at the same time, it's an abusable feat. So 
take it with a bit of trepidation. Now, the last one I chose, I'll get out of the way here, is uh, the Ritual Caster. I know that the Artificer doesn't get a lot of Ritual Spells, but having the ability to cast Ritual Spells quite easily is a great addition, and again, it helps save spell slots. Now, let's move on to the abilities. At level 3, you gain access to proficiency with woodcarver's tools, and this is more of a thematic thing. Each Artificer subclass has uh, specialization, for example, the Alchemist gets alchemy tools, Battlesmith gets armorer, uh, smithing tools. So this kind of works with it. It it does skew the subclass a little bit to force the Eldritch Cannons to be wood-based, which you could argue is going to take away from the military metal gun theme that some people would be going for. But I think it's it's something different, you know? And also at 3rd level, you gain access to the Eldritch Cannon. Now if you've played Team Fortress 2 with the Engineer or Overwatch with Torbjorn, you'll know putting down a turret and letting it do its work while you're fighting away is always a welcome addition. Uh, you use this on your bonus action and you're able to either use a wrist mounted or shoulder mounted, a tiny cannon, or you can make one that's uh, mobile that's the small uh, it's the small stature and it has feet i don't know if you can add wheels to it or some other mobility thing it's open to interpretation but you could quite easily make a mimic for example that is able to shoot out of its mouth which would be quite interesting or even just a drone of sorts or a remote control uh, little pinocchio style figure so, let's read through this then. You're learning how to create a magical cannon. Using the woodcarver's tools or smith's tools, you can take an action to magically create a small or tiny eldritch cannon in an unoccupied space on a horizontal surface within five feet of you. A small eldritch cannon can occupy its space, and a tiny one can be held in one hand. Once you create it, you need to wait for a long rest, and you can only have one cannon at a time at this level, which I think is fairly balanced. It's a magical object and has an AC of 18 and its hit points are tied to your Artificer level. It's immune to poison psychic damage and ability score as plus zero. Uh, oh, it's worth noting if you're going to choose any spells for the Artificer, if you're going to Artillerist, uh, definitely pick up Mending because it's tailor-made for this subclass. Now, uh, it does have hit points, it can be destroyed, but you can make it up quite easily. And I think... I think you're able to make another one with a spell slot. So, we'll see what happens. When you create the cannon, you determine its appearance and whether it has legs. You also decide what type it is, choosing from the options from the Eldritch Cannon table, which we'll check out in a second. On each of your turns, you can take a bonus action to cause the cannon to activate within 60 feet of it. As part of the same bonus action, you can move it around and climb up as well. It's worth noting climbing is uh, an option. You could have a mechanical goat climbing up the walls. But, uh, I think that the DM would rule against that maybe, unless you're able to cast Spider Climb on it. But that's a tangent. Let's get back to this. Oh. Skipping a bit ahead of ourselves. No. Let's check out the types of Eldritch Cannon you can get. There's the short range area of effect flamethrower, and uh, this is forcing people to take a spell save or they take 2d8 fire damage, half as much on a successful one. And for a bonus action, this is quite good. Uh, the next one is a force baluster, which is your not area of effect, but single damage on a target. It has a high range at 120 feet and it manages to push people away as well so i'm sure if you angle it correctly you could use it to manipulate the map and it, this works well with some of the spells you get later in the class you get wall of force you get wall of fire these sort of things so if you angle your cannon correctly you can knock people into the fire now the last one is protector which is more of a uh, sort of thing you would put up behind the uh, front of the 
group, if you have any barbarians or fighters that are melee focused, then putting a protector behind it definitely helps beef up their hit points. You can also keep it close to you and your wizard to try and uh, deflect some of the damage. So it uh, essentially gives you temporary hit points. And it's worth noting that it doesn't stack with A. The temporary hit points you can only have from one source, but still, it's a welcome addition, and it helps alleviate some of the pressure you're needing to alleviate uh, because you're a support subclass. It's kind of similar to... Excuse me. It's kind of similar to the bard in a way because the bard gives temporary hit points with certain spells but, uh, now let's move on to the level 5 ability level 5 is the arcane firearm now you can turn your wand, staff or rod into an arcane firearm a conduit for your destructive spells when you finish a long rest you can use woodcarver's tools to carve a special sigils into a wand <coughs> When you finish a long rest, you can use your woodcarver's tools to carve, a to carve special sigils into a wand, staff, or rod, and thereby turning it into your arcane firearm. The sigils disappear from the object if you later carve them onto a different item. The sigils otherwise last indefinitely. This essentially lets you add another 1d8 to uh, spells. So when you think about it, it doesn't affect spells over and over again because you can just do this uh what let's have a look here once or you can gain a bonus to one of the spells damage rolls equal to the number rolled from the 1d8 and here's the thing if you're casting area of effect spells which the artillerist gets a few then this applies to every creature that's hit and if you combine this with uh, level 5, you gain access to the Shatter uh, spell. Let me check my notes. So, between the Shatter spell doing 4d8 uh, damage on a con save, and your Eldritch Cannon doing 2d8 on a dex save, then it's roughly around about the same as a Fireball spell. The difference is that with a Fireball, it takes one action, and with a using Cannon and Shatter, it takes an action, bonus action, and it's two different saves, which can be worked to your advantage or disadvantage. Depends who you're fighting against. So, just as we're going through all this, I'd like to say that uh, if you want to continue the discussion, there's a Discord linked in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a comment and like and subscribe and all that jazz. It really helps me out and I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you do. Now, let's get moving on to the next ability. Now, the Explosive Cannon. This is essentially letting your Eldritch Cannons turn into a Kamikaze of sorts. You can set them up to run in and then uh, deal a lot of damage with the Flamethrower, and then make them explode at the last possible minute. Now, this is uh, great for stacking damage on damage. It's not as powerful as a Fireball spell, but if your cannon looks like it's about to die, then you might as well let it go out with a bang. Oh, uh, quick mention. If you're choosing the Heat Metal spell, which is a Artificer Classic, uh, it really works well with a lot of Artificer subclasses. It does take up a bonus action, so if you're going to be using your uh, Eldritch Cannon, it's going to be competing with that. So. Think about that before you choose your spells. So, moving on to one of the last abilities, Fortified Position. Now, you only gain this at high levels, so uh, bear that in mind that it can be a good ability, but uh, not everybody's going to get access to it. I know a lot of people, uh, they only play campaigns between level 1 to level 10 at the most, maybe 12 if you're lucky. Anyway, let's get checking on this ability. Fortified position. You and your allies have half cover when within 10 feet of a cannon created with Eldritch Cannon. As a result of a shimmering field of magic that protection that the cannon emits, you can now have two cannons at the same time. You can create two cannons with the same action, 
but not the same spell slot, and you can activate both of them with the same bonus action. You determine whether the cannons are identical to each other or different. You can't create a third cannon while you have two. So, going back to the previous description, let's check out the Eldritch Cannons again. Protector. The Protector's ability to give temporary hit points does not stack, so you can't have two of them competing with each other at the same time. But I would recommend having a Flamethrower and Protector if you want to get up close and personal, or a Force Baluster. Uh, well, you can have two Force Balusters if you want to try and stay further away. But uh, there are different possibilities and synergies, and I'll let you decide what you think is the best options. Uh, make sure you leave a, a comment and uh, tell me if I've missed anything out. But uh, yeah, I believe that is it. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, like I said before, there's a Discord if you want to continue the conversation. Uh, if you'd like to check out some of the other subclasses for the art for the Alchemist, I've got a link in the description for some of the other guides that I've done in the past. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you next time. Bye.